scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. It's been a while since I've recorded anything. Yes, I know you've had lots and lots of podcasts over the summer, but you've had nothing immediate as a review. I mean, let's face it, I'm not getting round until now to reviewing a handful of big finishes, so kind of I'm playing catch-up. Now, just for the record, I didn't win the Big Finish Short Trips competition. I did, however, get three emails from Ian, all saying what he'd liked about my stories, and incredibly encouraging they were too, especially considering that they arrived the same day that the rejection letter from the BBC came. But that's just me bringing you up to date. You don't need to know any of that. Suffice to say that there's the possibility of a brand new project on the horizon, but I'm sure you'll learn more about that when we get round to it. What you want to hear about is Doctor Who. What you wanted me to do is review some nice big finish. Well, as of recording this, you've not heard three reviews of three of the main ranges, two of them because it's September. Now, in September, Big Finish always managed to produce two individual releases. The reason for this is because there are 13 issues of Doctor Who magazine per year, And the idea was to have a brand new Doctor Who story from the main range in every single issue. Of course, Doctor Who, the TV series, came back, which means that they're stuck with a fairly arcane system. I'd forgive them for cutting it back to 12, but of course that's heresy. This month, being September, you've got Time in Office and the Silurian Candidate. But let's go back a couple of weeks to August. August's release was Blood Furnace, and that's what I'm going to be discussing today. Blood Furnace is another one of those remarkably good Mel, Ace and Seventh Doctor stories. In fact, if anything, you can not just picture it on TV, you actually think, is this not one of those episodes that I missed? And then of course you realise there were no episodes that you missed. And after all these years there really isn't. This week I think marks the 30th anniversary of the Seventh Doctor. Just think about that. For those of us of a certain age, we were watching Doctor Who. And we were watching The Seventh Doctor and this is what we were presented with. And you know what? The stories that we're listening to now feel just as real, just as accurate and just as well thought out as anything that was on TV, if not better. Let's face it, all Big Finish is better than a lot of TV. So... What's your basic plot? Well, you'll hear the trailer at the end of this. And that'll be marvellous. But I don't want to give away too many spoilers. Yes, it's set at a shipbuilding... Well, let's use the word yard or factory. In the middle of the the late 90s recession, when, of course, most of the shipbuilding places were closed. Now, now I'm from a place called Wall's End. Uh, The Americans have a term for Wall's End. The Rust Belt. A place that is seen better days, especially back in the 80s and 90s when this story is set. The heavy industry was all gone and we were switching over to a service economy. That's a service economy with nobody to serve. Unemployment was rife, so I grew up near yards. The sort of place that Sting makes musicals about. We don't want to discuss it. So I would have forgiven them, nay, I would have enjoyed it if this particular story had taken place in Wall's End, or indeed Sunderland, that's where they make the ships. They make them, the Mackhams, that's why people of Sunderland are called Mackhams, and they take them to the Tyne, Tyne Ship Repair. Yeah, it's not important. What is important is that this is set in Liverpool, and it works. 
Again, this is a story where actually makes use of Mel's skills. I know, who would have thought it? Computer expert. And it uses those wonderful things. Oh, I don't want to use the word memes or themes or anything like that, but stuff that we've recurred time and time again when you're dealing with the Seventh Doctor, especially in the books. You're looking at character development. He's becoming dark. He's dealing more with magic and old gods again. Stuff that, for me, I do like. I know some people have issues, but some people always have issues. That's just the way of the world. So yes, you've got a shipyard, you've got a ship being built, and you've got a very, very peculiar engine room. You've got a race of aliens with specific vulnerabilities and powers, and they are realised ridiculously well on audio. So much so that I want them to come back. Nay, I demand they come back and face someone like the Eighth Doctor. It just works. As a small side item, I just need to say that I didn't get to go to Hooverville this year. I was gutted. Truly, truly gutted. And I know that very soon, Time Shadow Volume 2, which contains one of my short stories, is due out, but I'll talk about that at the time. Unfortunately, with me not going to Hooverville, I just need to say that the reviews and the interviews that I normally put on the show might not appear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask other people who got the interviews if I can put those on my feed so you, my dear, dear listener, will still get to hear them. They just won't get to hear me do them. So, in the future, once they've all appeared on all of the other podcasts, I'll gather them together here and I'll put them out for you. That's not important. It's just something to look forward to in the future. What is important is that this particular story, Blood Furnace, is a gem. An absolute masterpiece. Knowing that Mel and Ace have developed and come to us afresh, anew, is brilliant. The people at Big Finish genuinely know what they're doing. Here's the trailer, and I'll let you decide for yourself. So until next time, be seeing you. Oh, I should really get back to work. Don't give the company your time for free, Joel. Some of us are grateful to have a job at all, you know. My dad's been out of work ten years. Coming soon from Big Finish Productions. We're on Merseyside, and the year is 1991. There's not going to be anything worth doing here. Unusual design. What sort of ship is it? I thought it was a cargo ship at first, but there are some very odd touches. I wonder if perhaps it's military. Hello? We're not ready to receive. We're shut down for the night. Is the blood crystal in place? Yes, Mum. Then all we need is blood. Hello, my neck. Look at the furnace. Some kind of crystal, looks like. But it's on fire. One can hardly launch a ship without it. Doctor Who, The Blood Furnace. Ah, now you're interested. Big Finish. We love stories. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. <laughs>